Hi guys, Glader here. So today I have a video about Dalaram and its lighting. For a long time, ever since I started to upload maps to VRChat, people had been asking me, how do you do the lighting? How do you do this lighting in Unity? Why does it take me seven hours to bake and the result looks awful and broken or whatever? And I've tried to give answers, small answers, short answers to lighting questions to people in VR chat ever since I joined, but the lighting in general is just a complicated thing and there's so much that can go wrong and there's so many things that you can do to cause debate time or the resulting light map size to take forever. And so what I want to talk to you today about is the lighting in Dalaran and how that's done. So. Firstly, the bake time for what you see right here is maybe 15-30 minutes without cash. So very quick actually. And the resulting quality is alright. It could be a lot higher resolution, but I honestly don't need that much resolution. Now, I'm gonna pull up my lighting settings so that you can see them. First I want to note that this is only 21 megabytes of light map data. You go to the global maps tab, you can actually you can open one of these, yeah you can actually see everything everything being baked is in those. And honestly it could probably be packed even tighter than that. I I don't know why it's not. And more importantly let's go down and take a look at the light map settings. Now your indirect resolution you can mouse over these settings. They're basically gonna tell you what, you're, what they're gonna do. And this says sets the resolution in texels that are used per unit for objects being lit by indirect. It's gonna the larger this number, the longer it's gonna take to bake. And there's so much stuff to remember with all this stuff. But if you pull up the clustering, I'm pretty sure this actually controls the amount of clusters that are given per object. So I could be wrong. Consult the documentation. There's just so much to remember with this stuff. And the idea is you want as few clusters as possible. I can't remember if you can control this per object. I'm going to try to avoid getting into uh, parameter, light map parameters. What's this? That's for pre compute. Um, but that might actually affect it. We can go. I might have another video where I check out what each one of these settings does. There's so much stuff here that even I forget a lot of this stuff sometimes. But anyway, you want as few clusters as possible. And the way that you can control that scene-wide is in light map settings, indirect resolution. Now, light map resolution is also very important. This is going to dramatically increase the amount of time that the scene bakes because it needs to essentially map more world space data, which you can imagine lights hitting world space objects and bouncing off and hitting other things. It needs to be more accurate and thorough with computing uh, the result, or else you'll get something very blurry. So if we change that resolution to other than 5, if we change this to the default 80, we'll have light maps that are uh, of more than 10 times the size of this. We'll have light maps that are almost a quarter gigabyte, and it'll take a very long time to bake. Padding you usually don't need to worry about. Light map size, usually just use the default, which is 1024. You only change this parameter if you need to achieve better mesh batching. You don't really need to worry about it. I have it for mesh batching right here, even though this actually isn't, the scene isn't very batchable, which is kind of disappointing, but I can't control that. There's, I've rewritten a part of the exporter and I do get a result, but the UVs are messed up on stuff like this. So, and even then, that just causes problems with screen spacing and inclusion. But anyway, so those are the settings, pretty much. Um, final gathering and inclusion are going to add a sometimes a significant portion of the light baking, which I don't have baked right now. But yeah, those are the settings. Uh, there's also a very important setting. And if we click on this, you can see on the actual mesh renderer component, you see this, we can control the scale and the light map. 
says it specifies the relative size of objects you use within a light map. And now this is going to dramatically reduce the size of this big data, and you want to use this for very, very large objects like this right here. This object is absolutely massive, but it's not going to receive much nuanced lighting. You know, at best, we'll switch to the light map mode. At best, you're going to get some lighting from these crystals and stuff, and you might get some nuance there, which you can hardly see. And so, you don't really want to allot this a significant portion of the light map, or you're going to have huge amounts of space for this object that really doesn't receive much changes in lighting. As opposed to, for example, this floor, which um, which has also a much significantly higher light map resolution, or scale on light map, sorry. And you can see that we can see the changes in the lighting much more significantly. You can see the shadows are very soft, the lighting changes are a much smoother gradient, and this is important. Making sure you allocate the least amount of budget to objects either by assigning them um, different light map parameters, which you should go read about this. There's a lot of documentation on what each of these does, and like I said, I can be pretty forgetful, so I'm <laughs> I might not remember what each of these does. But the goal is honestly in light baking to reduce the amount of time taken to bake so you can iterate quicker and also to reduce the resulting light map size and light map count. Light map count matters most because objects that are map, light mapped with different light maps can't be batched together and that is prohibitive to performance. And so yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the actual lighting itself. So if I come up here and we slight type slash or we type that. No not that that there we go. Okay so there's a bunch of these disabled but I'm gonna go ahead and select them all anyway. You can see that there's a significant amount of lights. This scene has many 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 lights. And I don't do anything special to set these up and in fact the other objects in the scene are not here, but there's some lanterns here, there's some torches on the wall here. You basically just put some lights where there would be realistic lighting. That's one way to do lighting. Um, you can see I've got some, I put a light here to simulate what light would look like if it was coming through this door, even though it's not physically correct. Oops. So you get a little bit of light coming in, you can hardly tell the difference. Um, we have some, most of these are point lights, but we do have some area lights. You can see the result of those here. They have a very purpley, purpleness up here, which is very nice. Um, let's go into the probably the best room to show you what's going on with lighting. It's probably this room. So they can all come together to make a very interesting contrast. We've got this purple, and we've got this orange. It's not as pronounced as it could be. But there's definitely some contrast there. We get some blue up there. So these are just lights where lights are. No, nothing particularly special with them. And this is the sort of quality you get when you bake lighting. So, you know, it doesn't matter how big your scene is. It doesn't matter how many lights you have. You can get small light map size with decent quality. You can get... Um, good bake times. You just have to put in some effort to change the scene-wide light parameters or do it per object. Change the per object light map scale. Make sure you have uh, sane indirect resolution and light map resolution. And basically that is all you need to achieve high quality, I dare I say beautiful <laughs> uh, light maps for even large maps such as the entire city of Dalaran. But that's it for today. I This was not as, nearly as in-depth as I'd like to go, but if I were to do that, I'd need to read up and study up a little bit more so that I don't get anything wrong. 
and I also need to prepare a scene and walk you through setting it all up. I'm just not ready to do that tonight. If this gets some positive feedback, maybe I'll do that. But thanks for watching for now, guys. That's going to be it for this video. I hope it's helped somebody somewhere do some lighting. Until the next video.